Hello, it's Sandra here from Vibrant Art. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to talk about this painting I created the other day. I actually quite like it, but I think the colour needs a little bit more contrast and a bit more energy. I just find that part through here is quite dull. Uh, and I made this using three colours, just the sienna colour, the turquoise and phalo, turquoise and phalo, um, turquoise, the sienna and white and a bit of black mixed in with it. Uh, the white of course I used a sort of a flow of white to make that nice flow movement there but I still feel a painting is lacking so I've been looking at it for a while and when I get stuck I use my stencils. I use these a lot. I love the stencils, especially this one here. So I've got here a little bit of the turquoise paint mixed in with a medium to make it nice. And, and I'm just going to just put a couple of little marks down here. It'll probably run because it's very, very runny. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it runs, it's starting to run now, and that's fine. And that's the, the turquoise, I've taken it down to the bottom. And I'm finding this sort of area here is quite dull. So I'm just going to paint a little bit over there using a stencil. And again, to just contrast the little areas. Um, looking up here, looking a little bit dull, so we'll just add a bit more colour into that. Not a lot, it's just, as you can see, oops, it's just little touches just to, that are going to make that difference, which I'll show you in a moment why we're doing this. Um, and just take it up towards the top so it looks like it's flowing through and creating the movement. You always look for rhythm and movement in your art and that's what I've got here going, going up here. Yeah. So that's looking a little bit like it belongs. We've got some runs here. I don't mind that. That's good. Now, I'm going to mix this with white. A little bit of white. And here's another colour. I've just put white into the turquoise. And again, we can use this again. Just make sure it doesn't run through onto the canvas. Because, mind you, if you make a mess, you just, you know what you do, you just get your rag and just take it off. So I'm going to just add a few more tonings here. Slightly different tonings now. Just trying to create a little bit more interest into the movement and the design. You can see that already, and I'll bring it to you soon, and I'll put a little bit more up here. So I've just added a softer colour there, and I'll bring it up. You can have a little look. You can see I've added a little bit softer colour here. And down here, it's not easy to see, but it's, it's subtle. And that's the whole idea of it. You want it so that when you look at a painting, you can't see everything, but you can see that there's an interesting lighter spot here. And you sort of think, well, what is that? And I'm going to run it down here and through. So you've got this movement coming through to create this. So here we go. It's going to run it across here. Don't overdo it, just a few places like there already. Uh, it's run a little bit there, but that's okay. The idea is just getting some shapes down onto, onto the canvas so that the actual design looks interesting and people actually want to come up and look at it because that's what you want in a piece of art. You want a bit of art that people are going to enjoy and enjoy looking at and looking at for a long time to come. Now, I 
Put another bit there, I think. It's just a matter of even running it around here. Um, by all means, have your dark contrasts. But I suppose what I'm trying to do is do the dark and light, changing the values, I guess you could say, in an easier way, just changing the values. And I'll show you here what's happened here. It's probably becoming more apparent down the bottom here. Do you see this here? It's, you can see it quite clearly there running through the light. And if I just paint there, you can see how the dark and the light is happening as I do it. And you actually don't even need a stencil. You can just put it in yourself where you feel. You can actually just lighten up certain areas like so. So there you are. And I think that's a lot better. I think it's calling for more lightness in it. And looking at this, I have this wonderful little bottle here that I use. It's a wonderful little thing. It's a little refillable bottle. It's got the tiny little tube at the end. I don't know if you can see it that clearly. And you could use it to do the movement here. And I'm going to just move it over. Nice. Now, it's getting more squiggly and a lot more contrast and I quite like that. It's starting to run and that's okay. That adds to it and having it coming up here and across. And I suppose what I love about this is that you can squeeze the bottle and you get those lovely drips. You see the drips just happening here? In front of your eyes. I don't want to overdo it because it's getting where it'll be over too much movement in it. But yeah, it's creating some very, very interesting drips. And I think in terms of this art here, I think it's looking a lot more interesting. If the drips get too heavy, I then stop what I'm doing and just leave the painting sit to sit and dry because you don't want the drips running all the way and going all the way down and all over the place, do you? I can just see a little area here. So that's, that's probably about all I want to do today is just teach you that um, if you're not happy with a painting, there are many, many ways you can finish it. And you don't have to think, well, I don't like that and it's a mess. You can always either gesso over it again, start again, or if you don't want to do that, you can actually use a cloth and wipe it all off. And I could do that now, I could use a cloth and wipe all that off. But I actually think the drips are fun running again. I just get a, a cloth and just stop it running too far. I don't mind some drips, but not a whole lot like that. Um, and join that up. You can see it's coming through here. I think that drippy effect is actually quite nice coming up and through. It's running along, which is good. You don't want it to go too far because it will take over the painting. So I tend to have a little rag here and mop it up as I go. Um, here we go. So that's my lesson for today, is that don't ever give up on a painting. Always remember that whatever your art is, you can always resurrect it. And never ever give up, never just throw a painting away because nothing's impossible. You start again, you get calm, be positive, believe you can do it, and you start again. Now looking at this now, I think it's a lot better than it was when we first started because it's got a lot more interesting marks. The white is really white now, and that is standing out and making it come forward. And the dark bits are going back, which I think is a nice look. Um, yeah, I think I'm quite happy with this. Um, and you know, like anything, you, you see something, you want to change it. And you see something and you sort of think, oh, I'll just add this bit and I'll just put this in. It doesn't matter, you can never overdo it because you can just get your little gesso, as I said to you many, many times, get your little pot of gesso and away you go, paint over the whole thing and start again. 
Sure, there'll be some uh, textile or texture into the, this, especially from these here, but that doesn't matter, that actually adds to a painting. So nothing is ever wasted. And the more you paint, the better you're going to get. The more you let go and let it flow, the better you're going to get. So that's why I call my course that I've done, let it go, let it flow. And that's that um, course that's online under www.vibrantsilks.com. It's a very short course, creating abstract painting from beginning to end. And you can create whatever colors you want, whatever style you want, or you want to paint it along with me, that's fine. And the final thing is when we're looking at paintings, it's always important to turn them around. Does it look all right like that? I don't think so. Does it look better like that? Uh, no. Does it look better like that one? Well, yes, I suppose it could look all right, but it seems to be a bit wide there. Normally the top is thinner. So back to this one then. And as you know, I do a lot of turning, turning the canvas. Very important because as you keep turning, you see different perspectives. So this is like a beach in paradise to me, like my little piece of paradise you know, and memories of a beach and swimming, the sea, the sand and the sun. Okay, that's why I created this painting. So we're always motivated by something, aren't we? Anyway, thanks for watching and see you again. Bye.